Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'm Sally Rideout, Government Affairs Specialist for the Southwest Indiana Chamber. We're joining and talking with Joe Kiefer, a member of the Vandenberg County Council running for re-election this year. And I'm happy to turn the conversation over to Tara Barney, the President and C Chief Executive Officer of the Southwest Indiana Chamber. Tara? Thanks, Sally, and thanks for being with us, Joe. Obviously, I've gotten to know you a bit since I've been in town, but it's nice to have a chance to talk with you specifically about your work with the council. And I'm gonna just lead off with the question I like to lead off in general, and that's talking about money. Uh, because uh, I'm, you know, it's been a, a dramatic year in, uh, in our business community, and it's, uh, it's challenged the resources of some local governments and other entities. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's as much of an issue for the county, but I'd still like to hear from you a little bit about uh, what your priorities are, what things you think the county um, uh, can always invest more in or that you're happy with the investments and where you think the county might, you know, be able to lighten their investment if they needed to. Just a sense of what things you, you make priorities. Okay, well, thank you, Tara. Thank you, Sally. Uh, Vandenberg County, like a lot of counties, uh, has suffered a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously, um, Income tax uh, is a little bit lower because fewer people are working. Uh, we also missed out on some property tax collections where people normally would have jobs and could afford to pay their property taxes have either missed or will be late paying property taxes. So we've been affected like that as well as everybody else. Uh, the one good thing about this county council and which I'm proud to be a part of it, is that they've been frugal over the years. They've never really been uh, spendthrifts, so to speak. And so we were in a much better position to uh, work our way through this p pandemic. And I think that's evidence in the fact that we are able to give our employees a 2% pay increase this 2021. So that's evidence showing that our watching every dollar has really paid dividends uh, for the county and for the employees. And we were also able to uh, give our deputy sheriffs, uh, we negotiated a contract where we were able to give them a 5% increase to help them get more competitive in hiring high quality deputy sheriffs. So that's helped us out a little bit as well. Now, where we will have some trouble and will have some struggle is that we've received far fewer riverboat gaming dollars than we have in the past. Obviously, uh, with COVID, uh, the casino was shut down for a long period of time, and there just wasn't any revenue to be shared back with the city or the county. So in those areas, it's going to hurt us a little bit. And we always use those dollars for capital projects just like the city, we tried to utilize uh, riverboat gaming money for capital dollars. Uh, some of the uh, areas that will probably suffer a little bit of because of that is, you know, we'll have uh, fewer dollars to do capital projects, say at Burdett Park, or, or maybe sometimes we do some of that money uh, for uh, paving, you know, when we'd run out of paving dollars, we would use some of that for paving or just buying equipment like new vehicles or new trucks, whatever, for the uh, highway garage. Sometimes we'll buy a new piece of equipment that improves our ability to take care of the roads. Those things will suffer a little bit, but fortunately, um, we've got a pretty good uh, program where they maintain their equipment and vehicles pretty pretty well and hopefully we can struggle through uh, missing one year of buying you know necessary equipment that we would have normally had been able to buy but the biggest the biggest uh, concern is our jail overpopulation and that's made a lot of news over the past year and so we're gonna to have to get creative on what we can do because quite frankly, you know, we just don't have the dollars. And even if we tried to pay for this with the income tax that the state legislature allocated for us to be able to use to use for public safety, it's still not enough money to um, build a new jail. And so 
we were already struggling with that prior to COVID, but COVID just made it uh, that much worse to be able to deal with. So the, I'm just, I'm curious to know, um, is there is there a committee or is, is there a game plan to look at the options? Yeah, I mean, we've had a committee like with the- um, I thought you the, had for quite a while. But. Yeah, we've had a committee and I think what the plan was, uh, was to put it on hold and see how everything else uh, fares. See, see when we finally collect all of our property tax mm -hmm. revenues and income tax revenues to see where we stand. I don't think anybody's um, punted it, so to speak, and, and plans not to do anything about the issue. I just think we decided that it was most prudent to wait before spending um, a bunch of dollars on a project. Now, what we are doing, and we have done in the past, is we continue our relationship with our neighboring counties, and that's where a lot of these uh, um, inmates will go to, is some of our neighboring counties. And what we found is, at the price that we pay per day per uh, person, uh, it's still a whole lot cheaper it's a great short-term solution. It's not a it's not a fantastic long-term solution because what if all of a sudden they become over capacity? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? If, what if they have some problems? Then then we'll have us then we'll have some issues. Well, since Southwest Indiana Chamber is very focused on the whole region, of course Vanderbilt is the center of the region. But I do think that's a a good short-term solution. And I know that when Posey County built their jail, they kind of counted on that a little bit. So. It's yes, nice it works yes. out short term, and uh, but it is something I'm going to be very interested in following because you know it's a very big investment and it says a lot about what we're doing in criminal justice in general, how we plan for those jails. So I find right, that and I knew I know that some of the judges, um, specifically Judge Shively, he and I have had some long conversations about uh, the need for the size of the facility that we would get because he feels like at least this way he expressed it to me is that there might be some programming we can do to alleviate some of that capacity need and some of that programming includes um, uh, at-home detention monitoring using uh, more bracelets and other other technology so we we've got some homework to do yet yeah yeah, there's certainly some options out there and there's certainly a, a lot more public interest in it than there probably was three years ago. So that'll be an interesting mm -hmm. community topic and it's good you've got some interest in leading on that, Joe. Yes. Um, so um, another thing I wanted to just put out for kind of a free flowing conversation is our interest as a business organization on growing our population. We know that um, at the rate we're going, we're not producing enough um, uh, young workers here to fill the jobs that we're gonna that we have in this region and are gonna have going forward. And so I'd really be interested in your thoughts on uh, future projects or initiatives the county council has a chance to lead in that um, can be helpful in making this a more appealing place for especially young talent to consider either staying or moving to. No, I, I totally agree with you and I, I think that as a business person, a small business owner, my whole livelihood depends upon our uh, community growing. And I'm not, I'm not saying uh, growing in a negative way, but growing in a pop uh, in a positive way. Yeah. You know, with more good jobs, which attract more mm -hmm. uh, people to the area. But there's, there's a whole lot more than good jobs because there's been times where, you know we have a shortage of employees and we're struggling, as you know, mm -hmm. to find uh, high quality uh, employees. So we have to do things such as um, make our community attractive by having better parks, better recreation, better uh, things to, for young people to do and to live and to experience. I mean, we're right on the river. We've got some great opportunities that maybe we're not taking advantage of because of the river but you know one thing was um 
our new uh, our new CVB director. I don't know if you met Jim or not. Oh yeah, but I met Jim. Yeah. Yeah, great guy, really talented. But he mentioned an idea that I thought was really good was, you know, we need to start looking at maybe how we could attract um, film production here in uh, in Vandenberg County or Southwest Indiana. And I thought that was intriguing because uh, if you look at where a lot of films are made, it's so expensive for them to do that. So I think there are some ideas out there floating around. And obviously we've been working on and we need to build on uh, our parks and recreation, such as Goble Fields and Deaconess Sports uh, Complex and, and projects like that will continue to support families. And so, yes, I totally agree. I, I don't necessarily have the answers, but I would very much support anything on council that supports uh, growth in our community because that's the only way we can build up our tax base and, and be able to do some things that we want to do to make this community more exciting. Well, uh, it's, it's good to have your, your uh, support behind that because I think it's a, a, going to be a priority of the chamber for, for years to come. Speaking of that, um, you know, the county has been so important in supporting uh, incentive requests and um, uh, businesses that are coming here that um, ask for a uh, partnership. I'll use that word. Um, are there uh, incentives that you think are more, more useful or less useful? Do you like training grants? Do you prefer tax phase in? Um, do, do you see ways we can do better in the way we use our incentives to um, to uh, grow business in the, in the region? Well, I have a unique perspective on this being a commercial realtor. I know. Yeah, so um, one of the things- I'm I guessing think, at least. Yeah, you know, the tax phase-ins are great and I love uh, tax phase-ins, but I wish we could uh, monetize those tax phase-ins so that way we could, um, maybe give some people some capital, some companies some capital Working up capital. front yep. Yep. and let them go Other ahead and pay their do taxes. That, you know. Yeah, Other but monetize that. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, one, that's one idea. And I know we have to be careful on how we do it and what we do, but I sure wouldn't want to lose the great, a great opportunity for the right employer mm -hmm. because we're not doing something. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'd like to see, and <laughs> again, Maybe this is somewhat uh, selfish on my part because I drive this every single day, but much like we did downtown, and obviously downtown has really gone through a, a, a metamorphosis over the years. I know Sally has been around as long as I have been. Uh, doesn't have the white hair I have, but it should, you know, you've seen what downtown used to look like compared to what it looks like today. And it's really a miracle, uh, some of the things that have been accomplished. But I'd like to see uh, Green River Road have some help along that way because I know a lot of times they don't like giving to retail. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they ought to give to retail, especially if it's the right retailer. And I don't want South Green River Road, south of the Lloyd to turn out to be another problem area where now all of a sudden everybody's scratching their head saying okay that's a blighted area what do we want to do there mm -hmm. you know um i think it's helped there's been some natural things occurring here like uh the schnooks building uh you know a developer redid the old schnooks building that looks oh, yeah. great that's good. yeah i've watched but, it but there still needs some help from lloyd down you know, south, and I wish they had a TIF district just for like a South Green River Road TIF district that people could um, maybe just do some beautification. If nothing else, if the city could use that money just to beautify the roadway, um, that would be something that would help South Green River Road because obviously I, I talk to retailers all the time and they get they look at South Green River Road and said, "Uh, uh, not it's not a, not a, at all exciting. We we want to be north of the Lloyd, north of the Lloyd, and I get it, but 
do we want to let this South Green River Road and this area of town deteriorate to the point to where it becomes a problem? Well, so, Joe, we'll have to talk more about that because when I got to town, that's one of the very first things I observed is that Green River is a very important corridor in creating tax base for this region and attracting retail. And that flyover that we did on the Lloyd created a very different climate between South Green River and North Green River. So we'll have to talk more about that. But um, it's, it's nice to have your perspective on those things. Well, I, I, do, I, I do think there's creative things that we can do uh, with TIFs and with uh, tax phase-ins, monetizing some tax phase-ins to give people capital up front because you don't realize, I mean, you do, but maybe a lot of people don't realize how expensive it is to do a project. I mean, it is oh, yeah. crazy expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. Construction costs have gone up yeah. uh, dramatically. They're pretty, they're pretty high here, yeah. Yes, so it it's just, you know, the cost of a home has, just the cost of housing has gone up. The other thing is, and this is not too sexy or anything, but, you know, we just need to continue to uh, grow our infrastructure. I mean, I can't tell you how many people say, well, we can't, we can't, you know, Vandenberg County just, you don't have the sewer capacity at this location or you don't have mm -hmm. the utilities at this location. And I think that's a problem. I look at um, uh, University Parkway and there's just not enough infrastructure out there mm -hmm. to do something. And I think it would have been great to have a technology park out there by the university or something, but you can't do st something without the infrastructure. Well, that is very well said. And, you know, I, I always want to ask a wrap up question. What are your priorities? But I clearly can see your priorities. So it's great to, it's great to, <laughs> to hear from you and to understand them. Uh, but I will wrap up a little bit because I want people to actually watch this. So, but we should talk more because I think we've got a lot of good things to talk about. Uh, yes, I'm I'd really, love to. Um, Thank you. I'm appreciative of you serving our community and I'm sure appreciative of you standing for election again. And I hope this conversation is helpful in making sure that our respective constituents get to know you a little better. Well, I think the chamber does a great job and, and you have excellent leadership, a lot of great committees and, um, you know, it's, you know, I can honestly say, and I'm not just saying this because you two are on the line, but I've always felt that, you know, the chamber has really supported their local businesses and that's important. And it that helps. That's our number one reason for existing. Yeah, it helps our community uh, thrive. Well said. I'm going to put you on our next uh, poster. Well, thanks <laughs> for being with us, Joe. We really do appreciate your time. And, uh, I hope you have a great few weeks here. All right. See you guys. Thank you very much.